Hey everyone, it's Chris Petrie. Thanks for coming by. Hey, let's uh, start out here. We're going to show you the finished painting right here. It's our gorgeous palm tree beach scene here. We got beach sand. We got some bushes. We have some beautiful, gorgeous hot sand with the orangey kind of colors on those uh, on the sand areas. We have some palm branches, beautiful, gorgeous bushes here. So this is the finished painting. I want everyone to um, have a fun time on this uh, video. Whether you're a beginner or you're a pro or you're an intermediate painter, whatever your level of watercolor expertise, please notice that this one's going to be fast. We're going to do a quick, fast painting. We're going to show you how you can create something really uh, exciting and fresh and good looking by just taking some techniques and methods that I'm going to show here on this video to help you to create a beautiful, you know, painting in, in no time, in maybe like 15 or 20 minutes. You know, maybe if you're if you're really if you're just a beginner, you know, maybe it's going to take you a, a half an hour, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. But for the most part, if you've been painting qu quite a long time, you know, you can do this in 20, 25 minutes, and, and uh, just like we're going to do here. But I'll cover everything, every step of the way. You're going to see everything how we do it. No mysteries here, and um, also um, we are uh, going to explain a really cool method of using your palette where you take all your colors and mix them first on your palette and we're going to use a large size palette in this video so you'll see that coming up next but I don't want to give too much away because then you might just say well I don't like it and you're going to move on I want you to stay here watch my video stick with us here work along with us you're going to create a beautiful painting here if you do this painting I guarantee it it's going to be a painting you're probably going to go out and be going to the hobby store and figuring out what frame you're going to get and what mat you're going to get for this painting to put on because it's going to look so good when you're done you're going to have to do that you're going to have to go out and get a mat and a frame for it and hang it up in your place or you might give it as a gift or who knows what's going to happen but it's all the mystery of watercolor painting, so let's let's keep going here and having fun and get excited about your watercolors. And again, this is a real fun one to do. One of my favorites, I think, is just painting quick, fast, expeditiously, um, no fooling around. Just get the paint and the and the water onto that paper, and, and you're going to see how exciting uh, watercolor can be. Okay, so let's start out in just a few minutes. Okay, I'm just going to get a quick break in here, and then we'll we'll start up. Thanks. Okay, we're getting back started again here. Uh, let's get uh, moving along. And you saw the finished painting. This is such an exciting painting of, you know, that really the sand of the beaches, the palm trees, the ocean, seascapes. Uh, we, these are some of the greatest uh, paintings we can do. They're so much fun. They remind us of like times when we've gone to the beach, to the shore all the great things of swimming in the ocean and just, you know, the, the fun uh, of being at the beach, at the ocean, along the seascapes. Um, let's uh, continue on here. So we saw the finished painting right now. I'll just cover this quickly, which is important. This is my palette. Um, this is my large Holbein palette. I actually took off the lid so that it's just the half of the actual palette paint box without the top lid so that I can, you know, put this onto my YouTube videos here. So that's the only reason I really took off that top lid. There's a hinge on here with a, a rod. I pulled the rod out and took the, the lid off just so we can have it and we can use it here on video. And um, this is in a plastic bag. I keep this in a small refrigerator in my studio with a, a damp paper towel. I can leave this for a month without touching it at all with a damp sponge, a damp uh, paper towel in here in a, in a plastic Ziploc bag and this is what I have. A palette that's ready to go. The paints are still damp, moist, perfect to use and like, like we always say we want to have fresh moist paint all the time and that's how I do it. A Ziploc bag, a damp paper towel or a sponge in there, and all these paints stay nice and moist and fresh and juicy, ready to go for whenever you want to paint. So um, that's, <clears throat> that's an important tidbit of information, everybody. <laughs> I hope you'll I hope you'll take notice of that because 
If you're painting on my channel here and you're following along, and many of you have been following a long time, you've already uh, really kind of, you know, figured this out. You ha you're, this is working for you. You understand you got to keep your paints moist and juicy. You don't want to be squeezing out paint out of your tubes every time you go to paint. So that's why we do it this way. We put it in a plastic bag. We put our paper, damp paper towel soaking with water, put it in there, keep it in a cool place. You know, whether it's, uh, if it's winter time, you can leave it, you know, in a porch, by a window, that's like a cool window, a drafty window, um, in the, um, you know, a small refrigerator. You'd want to definitely uh, make sure though that, uh, you know, watercolor paints are um, toxic sometimes, so you just want to keep them safe. Don't, you know, make sure you have it so that there's uh, no, no one's going to think it's um, cake frosting or anything like that and use it to put on their uh, cake or anything like that. So be sure to be safe when you're using all of your art supplies at all times. And um, <clears throat> so we have this. We're going to secure this down to our working table with some masking tape. And then after that, we're set. We're going to start drawing our scene, our beautiful beach scene here. So I have my uh, tape here. So I'm using masking tape. I usually just trim off a little piece of tape. I'm always very careful with my scissors and my, my art supplies here. And Let's see now. We're going to line this up OK. Right there is perfect. Okay, and I always tape this down to my work table so that it doesn't move around. That's really distracting when you're trying to create a video and your supplies are all moving around and that doesn't look good on camera and it certainly is distracting for me. I like to have everything nice and stable, locked down. So that's what I'm going to do. Get this taped down to my palette or to my uh, working table here. My table's just got a little bit of a pitch to it, maybe like only, you know, 10%, like a, a 10 degree, about a 10 or 15 degree um, tilt to it. So my board is tilted up just a little bit like this. Just a little bit, not much for our videos here. So we have our palette taped down, nice and secure. And then we're gonna clean up our palette just a little bit. So I dip that into the fresh clean water in my water bucket next to me and let's just get our, our old paints off there. We want to always start out with a nice fresh clean palette. We want nice clean pure color when we're painting. We don't want to have things, um, you know, we don't want too many different colors distracting us. We want to have nice, clean, pure colors. There we go. So we're all prepped and ready to go. We have our palette ready to go. And we're going to load up this palette with tons of beautiful color in just a minute or two. We're going to first do a quick drawing. But this is going to be a fun painting because we're going to actually um, kind of do like a really fast, free, exciting uh, seascape type painting, a beach scene, where you can actually paint this in like 15 or 20 minutes. And I'm going to show you how you can do it. It's sort of like, you know, kind of like you can do a couple of shortcuts here as we're going to show so that you're able to do a painting like this, you know, very quickly, very rapidly, and there's not too much, you know, um, uh, long periods of time that you have to wait for things to dry or so on and so forth. It's just going to be really fast, really quick, really beautiful. By the time we're done, you're going to see a beautiful painting uh, here. And again, it's quick, it's fast, it's easy. And uh, if you're a beginner, you can do this painting as a beginner just starting out. Maybe if you're only painting watercolors like you know, two weeks or two months or, you know, whatever. So if you're just new to this channel here, you're going to see how we can do a quick, simple watercolor painting. And uh, it, it, it's really kind of um, just a matter of the methods and the techniques that we're going to use to make it happen. So first thing, of course, as you see, I have a, a good size palette here. This is a pretty large size palette um, that I have 
on camera here. So there's lots of room for lots of color mixing. So you want we want to have that right away. And this is a Holbein, made by Holbein, aluminum palette. It's an aluminum palette by Holbein. I took the lid off. Usually there's another um, top lid that goes over the top of this. I did remove it, but you can leave that on there, of course, uh, for yourself in your home studio. And uh, these are all my colors I use on a consistent basis. If you have any questions about my colors, just simply type in my name, Chris, C-H-R-A-S, last name, Petri, P-E-T-R-I, Chris, Petri, space, palette, P-A-L-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. So if you type in my name and the word palette into YouTube on the YouTube search uh, uh, bar up on the top of YouTube, you'll see I have like five or ten palette videos where I cover all my colors, what brands of paint I use, what exact colors I use, the names of them, the spelling of them. Uh, I also cover uh, how do you keep your paints moist and fresh and juicy so every time you paint it's real easy. And so all these things are covered already. I have many videos out. I have hundreds of videos actually on YouTube. You can go back in my YouTube uh, channel, my page, and you can look back in my archives. In my archives, I have hundreds of videos. You can go back and look at all kinds of interesting videos, just tons of them, to get up to speed on all kinds of interesting information on watercolor. But even if you don't want to do that, just stick with us here every week. And <laughs> we're doing watercolors every week. You just have to subscribe. So if you click that subscribe button down there on the right-hand side, right below here, uh, that red, red subscribe button just below in the video here, this way you'll see our videos, you'll be able to watch our videos every week as we go, and we're doing numerous videos every week, all kinds of subject matter, flowers, seascapes, landscapes, figure painting, we do tutorials on paint colors, paint swatches, techniques, all that good stuff, so stay right here and have a great time with us. Alright, so now we, we're all set up, we got our palette all set up here taped down so it's not moving around on us. We got our paper taped down. This is Arches rough paper. So if you could just imagine um, the Arches rough paper is real simple. It's, it's the gum pads. It's got the orange top on it. So if you're looking for Arches uh, rough paper, you just look for the pad with the orange cover on it like this and you have it and it comes in all different sizes. You can get them in small sizes like, you know, uh, uh, 9 by 9 by 12, 14 by 16, 18 by 24, 24 by 30, whatever sizes you need. You get you get your watercolor paper on, you know, online if you want to buy it or in an art store. But Arches I use a lot. Arches is a great paper. So we're going to use Arches this time. I use different watercolor papers, not to confuse things, but let's get started with our drawing. So basically, we'll just use a retractable pencil. So I have a retractable pencil like this here. You just click with your thumb and you get your, um, you get your pencil lead. This is a 0 0.9 millimeter Pentel retractable mechanical pencil. Architects and engineers use these a lot. And um, <clears throat> they work great for artists too, and many great artists use these because, you know, when you're working, you just want to have quick access to your point of your pencil. You don't want to be using a, you know, a, a pencil sharpener all the time. Sometimes you just want to be working quick and just you click a couple times with your thumb on your pencil and you have uh, new uh, lead coming out. And it's great, just a fantastic uh, mechanical pencil. It's got a little rubber gripper here on the front. So you have those little rubber grippers on the front of the pencil. This way it doesn't slide around too much. It's got a nice soft feel to it. Beautiful, awesome pencil here. All right, so now here we have our paper. So we're going to make our painting maybe, uh, let's see, let's make it like, let's just take it and say, let's make a line for a sand dune right here. Look at that, a sand dune like that, right across the center of the page. Let me turn down that light a second. I might have to <clears throat> make this a little darker. So here we go. There we go. About halfway on the page. This is the bottom of the page down here. 
top of the pages right here. Halfway, you make your sand dune line. That's going to be your sand dune. Now that you see that I have my line on the paper, I might just lift up a little bit of pencil line here. I might just erase a little bit of it. I don't want it to maybe be that dark, but that's fine. You can leave it dark, no big deal. I'm using a kneaded eraser just to lift up a little bit of the, the line. I want to make sure you can see that across the page. And then now we're going to do a simple palm tree. So let's start our palm tree, like about here, and let's just do that. There we go. There we go, look at that. Palm tree. Now with our palm tree, we're just going to make some palm shapes like this. And again, you're having fun with this. You're not getting concerned about perfection. No perfection here. Just get the general idea of radiating forms of palm trees and palm branches going out. Just like this almost like an explosion, like a like that. That's all you need to do to get your palm tree shape. There you go. Look, that's it. So we have our palm tree, our palms up here. And again, this is an abstract style watercolor. Again, we're, we're just focusing on let's get this done fast. Let's just we'll get it done quick, fast and exciting. Okay, now we have the interesting palm tree there. Let's have a bush over here. Let's say we'll have a nice little bush along the side here in the sand. So I'm going to do a little... I'm running out of lead here. So let me get another pencil. And I'll just pick up here and do another pencil here. Same style. This is a Bic retractable pencil. It's the same thing, a 0.9 millimeter. It's got the little rubber gripper on the front here, like so. I got these at work. And uh, so now we have, we're gonna do a little, we're gonna do a bush on the side here. Just some bushes here on the sand, like that. Maybe another bush over here, alongside the tree. And some more over here, too. Okay, and then over here, let's do another. And another bush over here, toward this side. There we go. And then on this sand dune over here, let's have a little bit of bushes and plants and trees along this sand dune. So up here it's going to be some branches and some trees and some bushes. And then here's going to be our sand, our white sand over here. Now this is a simple trick you can use. I've used this many times. Try, try this trick out once in a while. This little tidbit of information is really important. If you're doing a painting like this where you have let's say trees and bushes and then you have lots of white sand it might be good just to put a W a very light W you can barely see it where the white sand is just so you don't paint over it by accident so that's what I do sometimes I'll just touch I'll sl very so ever slightly put a couple W's here and there we can erase those later and this is the sky we, we don't have to worry about that we, we're not going to paint anything in the sky but put W where you might want to have your white paper, which is our white sand, just so we don't cover over it. There you go. So I put it in a few locations just to remind me, as I'm painting, not to paint over that. Okay? So look at how much we've done already. It's only been, uh, whatever, 10, 15 minutes. We've got our drawing done, our palm tree right here, right? Our palm tree, we got our, uh, our trunk of our palm tree right there. Then we have a nice radiating forms out here, nothing fancy, just get some of those lines out there so you know you're going to be painting with your brush, with nice brush strokes radiating out with your palms of your palm tree. We got our horizon line or, you know, our sand dune line right here across the center of the page. 
And then we have a couple bushes alongside the tree here, and a couple more bushes down here below. And we have our white sand, and we put our little small W's in our white sand areas. So is that easy or what? Hey, there is a lot of fun with watercolor. You don't have to stress over watercolor. You can have a fun, great time doing it. Now this is half the battle. You got your drawing down. You've got that done. Now next we're going to cover how we're going to mix our paints to make it easy for us to just get this done quick and effectively. And you're going to see how we're going to do it. I'll cover it next. But first we must take a break. We've got to take breaks. Take lots of breaks when you watercolor paint. This way you can sit down, relax, have a cup of tea, a cup of coffee. I'm going to have a cup of coffee and a, some pumpkin pie in just a few minutes or so. And maybe in, maybe after the next uh, the next section. I, I'm not sure yet, but I know there's some pumpkin pie waiting for me and some coffee. So I'm going to have that. But in the meantime, that's the game plan here. We're going to have the, we have the pencil drawing done now. Perfect. We got that in. You saw how we did that. It's real simple. You know, you get this in. Perfect. Now we're going to mix our paints next. And then once we mix our paints in our large palette here, we have a quite, quite a, you know, this is a quite, this is a large palette, lots of room to mix, lots of paint. And then once we do that, then we're going to paint and we're going to go fast and get this done real quick. And you're going to do this too at home, whether you're a pro and you've been painting 20 years, or if you just started out and you're only two weeks into watercolor painting and you've just joined my channel and you're just starting, you're going to do this painting. You're going to have a fun time with it. You're going to have a, an exciting time and you're going to see how you're going to get this painting done in a really short amount of time and have fun doing it. And it's going to look beautiful. It's going to look so good. You're going to go out and find a frame for it and a mat and you're going to put it in your house. You're going to frame it and mat it, put it in your house, hang it up. And that's your first painting. You're going to have a beautiful painting in your house, in your place. Uh, and then you're going to keep working on these types of paintings and have a, a beautiful time of it uh, painting watercolors. So we'll be right back. Okay, everybody, we'll be back in just a second. We're just going to uh, get some coffee maybe and uh, take a break and then we'll come back and start up again. Okay, see you in a second. Okay, we are really rocking and rolling here. We're having a great time. We're going to do our gorgeous palm tree and sand dunes. Fast and really exciting, fast. We're not going to fuss around too much. And again, if you're just starting out in watercolor or you've been painting a long time, it doesn't matter. You're going to have a fun time doing this and it's going to be exciting. And you're going to see how we're going to help ourselves to create this painting by planning ahead a little bit, putting our colors out into our palette first. So. Um, there's lots of ways you can paint in watercolor. It's a very creative medium. Um, those of you that follow me on a regular basis, you'll know that I always talk about that. You know, you have the, you're the artist. You create your paintings the way you like to paint them. You know, I offer my ideas on techniques, methods, um, you know, my ways of uh, painting and drawing and painting in watercolor. But in the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's your choice how you want to do it. You're the artist. You can put your own spin on anything I do. You know, you can take some of the things I teach and use them. Some other things you don't, you may not want to use, and that's fine. I don't really uh, try to push that everyone use or do the same things I do. I'm just trying to share what I do, and then hopefully you can find some things you like, maybe a lot of things you like, maybe a few things you like, and incorporate that into your paintings. That's the main thing. So here now we're just doing a tiny bit of a little different thing. I normally work as I go and I really don't put out all my colors first. But in this case, on this painting, we're going to try to do a fast, exciting painting and we're going to try to get ahead of the game a little bit by putting out all our colors in our uh, palette first, our paint box here. So let's try it, see how it works, see how it works for you. And then, you know, if this works for you, then great. You have a new technique and method you can use, uh, you know, for your watercolor. So let's start out. Okay, so I'm just using a, um, uh, a round watercolor brush with natural hairs, Kalinsky Sable natural hairs. And uh, we're going to um, put out some colors. So here, now the thing is with this painting is um, basically just kind of, if you follow along with, the colors I'm going to use and put out onto my palette, that's fine. You don't need to know much more than that. There's no real mystery to anything, okay? So let's get out our colors. 
So let's put our colors right where they are on the palette into the paint box section, the mixing area, right where they are. So we wouldn't take our green, sap green this is, and of course if you look up my palette information again, if you just type in Chris, C-H-R-I-S, space, P-E-T-R-I, space, palette, P-A-L-E-T-T-E. -E. You type that into YouTube and you'll see I have like five or ten videos on my palette. So you'll learn all the information you need there when you go back and check out my other videos on my palette. But for right now, just remember you want to just take your paint straight out from the paint well and right into the palette, right where it is, so that you're not trying to, you know, do anything fancy where you're taking your sap green and then going up here and mixing it up here. That wouldn't make sense, would it? We take it right out from where it is and we leave it right there in the palette. Okay, so that's sap green. Then we'll take some cobalt blue, cerulean blue. Look how soft and moist all this paint is. You can't use dried paint when you're painting on with my techniques. When I use my techniques here and I'm showing you how to paint, all my paints are soft and moist. You have to have that. You can't use dried, hard-packed paint and then try to spritz a little water on it and think it's going to work. It won't work. You've got to have rich color, thick paint, moist, goopy paint. You have to have that to do this technique and to accomplish this painting successfully. So let's keep going. Cobalt blue, cerulean blue, sap green, French ultramarine blue, that really dark, beautiful, exciting blue, Prussian blue, that beautiful, intense blue. I keep rinsing my brush off as I go here and then drying it on a paper towel. So I'm always using my paper towel to take a little bit of water off. I don't want to flood my colors with water. So when I rinse my brush off, I'm using a uh, large Holbein collapsible water container. You can see it's collapsible. You can squeeze it down and compress it, make it small, throw it in a backpack if you're going to go outside and paint. If not, no big deal. You're going to use it just like this in your studio, or wherever you work, wherever you're doing your painting. It's collapsible. It's a, a really large watercolor bucket paint, uh, container, water uh, container. So I use this. It's already getting, look at that, I've already got the water's already turning green from the mixing and the cleaning of my brush. But in any case, let's leave this over here to the right. That's my water container. When I rinse my brush off, I just touch it quick on a piece of paper towel to take off some of the water. Then I go over here and I add in some more colors. Let's do purple, ultramarine violet. Now, let's go into the blacks. Payne's gray. We're doing some Pines gray and some Ivory black too, ivory black over here. So you can see I'm getting all my colors out first. See that? Rinse off my brush, dry off the brush on my tissue. Then we're going to go in. We're going to get some burnt umber, some burnt sienna. Then we're going to get some gold colors, some yellow ochre, some raw sienna. So we're using a lot of our colors in our palette here. And I think um, that should be good. A little bit of red. We'll get some red, cadmium red. Alizarin crimson. So you can see all the colors are now out on my palette that I'm going to use. Most of my colors I'm going to use, not all of them though. You maybe can see some of the colors I maybe skipped over. Um, but I use most of them. Maybe a little bit of cadmium orange too. But that's the key, if you can get all your colors out on your palette to start with, you're way ahead of the game. Now when we go to do our painting, we're ready to go. Ivory black. Payne's gray. Viridian, we need viridian here too. That's a beautiful turquoise type green, that looks great too. Let's have a fun time with this. And again, like we said, we're not going to spend four hours here painting. We're going to do this in like 10, 15 minutes. Okay, so now if you start your stopwatch and you, uh, <laughs> you'll you see we're going to do this fast. Okay, first thing we're going to do, Payne's Gray, Ivory Black, 
Let's get some greens. Mix the greens in with the ivory black and Payne's gray and blues. And you're just going to splash some on there like that. Okay. Then you're going to take some water and you're going to do some splashing. A little bit of splashing like that. Then you're going to take some cerulean blue. Then you're going to start getting some of those like that. You see that? I'm just getting some of these bran branches. Quick. That's it. Now, <clears throat> let's mix in some gold. Some raw sienna. Raw sienna, yellow ochre. Put a little bit of gold in there. Just put a couple spots of gold here and there. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Splash it on too. Like that. There we go. Look at that. We're already really moving along here. French ultramarine blue, cobalt blue. Get some blues in there. And then we're going to go with some darker darks. Burnt umber. I know I'm moving fast here. You might have to slow down the tape. You might have to try this a few times. Don't be afraid to try this three, four, five, six, eight times. Okay, do as many times as you need to do it to get it so that it looks good and you're happy with it. As long as you're happy with it, you're, you're set. Okay, look at that. Then you can always take your thumbnail or you can use anything like a small um, uh, anything you might have, I'm using my thumbnail and I'm just going to do a couple little and my pointer fingernail, like my uh, pointer finger like that just do a couple little scratches like that then we go in and we use our needlepoint brush and we take some Prussian blue some French ultramarine blue some also some uh, burnt sienna and then we can do that and just do a couple some fine pointer pointy needles on our good looks great you can also take your tissue and blot up a couple spots look at that a couple spots you blot up Now, we take that dark mix there. Let's do our. Look at that. And again, you have to remember I'm going fast here. Go slow, and then when you um, watch this video, watch this video a number of times. Maybe take some notes on it so you can kind of catch the um, feel of what I'm doing as far as the colors. That's the hardest part of this is figuring out, but you don't have to use as many fancy color mixes as I'm doing here. I've been working in watercolors for a long, long time, so I obviously can just really buzz through this real fast, and, you know, it's no big deal. But if you're just starting out and maybe you're new, you're going to have to take some notes, practice it occasionally, but there we go. Bushes with some greens and blues like we were using here. Maybe a couple little bit of spots of red. Take some red. Move some exciting colors in here. Take some reds and oranges like that. Take some reds and oranges. We'll get some exciting colors going. Then we we'll do a little bit of shadowing here. There we go. Look at that. And now we're just using the colors we have in our palette. 
mix out some more French uh, Payne's Gray and Ivory Black so we can gray down some of these colors and then you want to get back into the same colors, mix the same ones back out. Um, French Ultramarine Blue, Prussian Blue, French Ultramarine Blue, Cobalt Blue, Cerulean Blue, get these all back out again. Um, Viridian, uh, uh, Sap Green, there you go. And then you get your warmer colors. Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Raw Umber, Payne's, uh, this is, um, that's uh, Raw Sienna, Yellow Ochre, there you go. Just get some exciting color going. There we go. Little spots of colors here and there. Get those nice gray mixes going with the blacks, the, the, co the black colors. You know, we got our Payne's Gray and Ivory Black. Look at that. And just kind of, you know, move the brush around, have fun. Don't take it too seriously. Like so. Like that. And then we have, um, we'll, actually, we'll just keep working the colors. And again, I'm just constantly rinsing my brush, checking water off on the paper towel as I go, so that I'm not having a brush that's just dripping and flowing water all over the place. We want to keep these colors nice and dark and colorful. So... that. A couple splashes here and there, like so. Okay, and then more. Let's do more down here. This is going to be our, let's get our dark ivory black and Payne's Gray to gray that down a little bit. There we go. Ivory black, Payne's Gray. Again, just have fun with this. You're making some nice you know, radiating forms going out like so. Splash some water on there like so. This is again a fast painting. You don't want to spend more than 15-20 minutes on this. You want to really go at a good pace. That's what makes it exciting. Actually, you'll notice that sometimes if you do paintings really quick and fast, that excitement and that explosive nature of the quickness of how you're painting is actually part of the beauty of it. So. Remember that, because it really is a true um, reality with painting. If you're using um, excitement and passion and, ex and quickness and speed as you go, that is going to translate into a beautiful painting, no matter what anyone says. So, there we go some more fast, quick, like that. And uh, let's see. Let's do another bush over here. Sap green, Viridian green. Let's get some more of that ivory black and Payne's gray. Some burnt umber and burnt sienna. splashes like so there we go and now let's go in we'll get our needlepoint brush you see how fine of a point that is that needlepoint brush is perfect for the details here so we're going to get some of those details in let's do some 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 beautiful grass grass shapes here look at that Most of our grass shapes and, and markings are going to go to the right. So the wind is predominantly going this way. Okay, look at that. We're almost complete now. 
let's take a quick break and we're going to finish this painting and again like I said speed and quickness doing this painting no matter I mean I'm saying try to follow my paint color choices as I'm working all my paint colors trying to get that close to what you can get it but the main thing is if you're the main part of the technique and the main part of the method and techniques I'm using here the main focus and idea here is quickness speed fast getting it done quickly as long as you have the tree in there nice and your uh, sand dunes with your bushes and some of your grasses and things like that as you've seen me paint here it took me no more than 10-15 minutes to paint this you want to do it in 10-15 minutes too maybe 20 minutes 25 minutes because you know obviously I've been painting 15-20 years if you're just starting out it's gonna you know I'm not gonna say try to do it in the same amount of time I'm doing it but please notice that the the real uh, exciting and important part of this is getting it done real fast get the brush strokes in real quick have a great time at it get excited about it just fire it in and do it fire in your your brush strokes and your paint quick and I guarantee you you leave it alone let it dry and you'll have a, a really exciting looking painting and um, I trust me it's gonna, it's gonna look beautiful so let's come back though I just want to do a few more very light washes to the sky and some of the sand and then we'll be complete so let's come back in just a minute I just want to take a break and I think there's some coffee and pumpkin pie I might just wait till I'm done and then this way I can really relax and totally chill out but anyway have fun with this and again please subscribe if you haven't subscribed down below here on the right hand side hit that subscribe button you want to be sticking with us here and joining us all we're all here together thousands of us painting every week you want to join with us come along with us and paint with us learn these new techniques new fun stuff we're always doing something new exciting we do the same things over and over too so you kind of learn everything as you go and eventually you just you have it okay all right so i'll be right back all right we're back and we're going to finish up this painting right now and again, like I said, hey, you know, all of you that have joined along on this painting, I'm, thank you so much for coming by. I appreciate it. Uh, I really think that uh, if you're coming to my channel week by week, uh, month after month, and year after year, you're going to really uh, have a great time of learning watercolor. I kind of cover all the basics all the time. Every time I create a painting here on uh, YouTube, I'm always covering the basics. So if you're watching every week, and following along you're going to learn the basics of, of watercolor just by default and by just following along you'll you'll kind of learn it that way by just watching and hearing all of the techniques we cover and the paint colors and the techniques of how we put watercolor down onto our uh, paper but um but if you're just new and you want to create an exciting painting this is the one to do it's really fun it's enjoyable and if you've been painting a long time and you maybe you haven't done too many uh, seascape paintings or beach scenes and you want to do this one have a blast have a have a go at this one really you know have a bash and um let's let's finish it up that's it we're just really looking to finish up this painting we're 90 percent done here let's get some uh, wood, uh paper towels and we'll dip that into our water pail our water container and we'll just clean up our palette now because we're really we don't really need you know to have all this paint out on the palette now we've got all of our washes pretty much on the paper so we're just looking to clean up the palette get it really uh, cleaned up for uh, our last few couple washes here so I'm using paper towels and um, that's all so that's all just to get it somewhat clean and good there we go and uh, what else we want to do so we're going to finish up here and hmm, what are we going to do next here okay so now we're going to leave lots of great white paper here we're not going to um, get involved with doing much more to uh, the washes what we do want to what we do want to do is now you notice we're going to add some washes to the white paper and this is really critical this is a, an extremely important uh, an important part of this painting and what we're doing here on this video is if we're going to go in now and do some very light beautiful light washes on the white paper maybe get some blue sky washes in and some orange or yellow very light washes just to give it some warmth for the sand 
or some uh, maybe some uh, lizard and crimson for the sand color. Whatever we choose to use for very light washes, we can't use this water, which you can see is very muddy and dark now. So when you're going in to do a wash, a light, light wash, very light wash on white paper, you, you have to change your water out. So I'm going to dump this water out and get fresh, clean water. That's a really highly important detail to this painting right now because you can see all that white paper there. If we were to dip our brush in here now and try to get a light wash of blue or orange or whatever we're going to use and we're using this murky, um, muddied up water, it's not going to look as good. So let's keep that in mind. So now I just put in some fresh clean water. And let's just put a tiny bit of cadmium orange on some of the sand. So now I use my tissue, dry off the brush a little, and just ever so slightly put a little bit of orange wash lightly on the sand here. It doesn't have to be everywhere can be hit and miss. It doesn't have to be everywhere. Just so that whoever's looking at this painting is going to go, wow, look at that. I can really feel the warmth of the sand because there's a little bit of that orange wash and we're, we have the secrets. We're the watercolor artists. We're the artists. We're putting in these little secret ideas and techniques and methods on our paintings so that people, they don't know what we're doing, but we do. And we know we're adding some warm washes to our white paper just ever so slightly to make it look like warm sand. So right away we feel like, ooh, that's some warm sand. And we can even splash on some little bits of splash on the sand to make it look like it's sand itself with little tiny speckles like that. And the same thing down here. Let's a little more orange ever so slightly, just a little bit of orange. But the key to this is doing it quickly, getting it on there, and that's it. Because if you keep mixing around on the paper, you'll start to disturb all these other darker washes we put on there, and it'll start to really go downhill and not look good. So remember, just add that little bit of orange to the paper, and that's it. Don't mess around with it too much. put some in there and you can even blot it up a little bit like that and that's all we need to do and we're having a little bit of a thunderstorm here now next we're gonna do a little bit of cobalt blue look at that oh, beautiful cobalt blue Cobalt blue is absolutely a great all-purpose blue sky color. Let's add some in here over here on the left-hand side over here. Again, a little touch of cobalt blue, but don't keep mixing it and going over it and over it. Just one time, add a little bit, blot up maybe a little bit with your tissue if you have to, just a touch, and that's it. There it is, some blue and some Cobalt blue up here too. There we go. There we go. Now take that clean fresh water and just put some on. And just let it flow down the paper a little bit like that. Isn't that exciting? And I just blot up a little bit too. Tap that tissue on there just a little bit. That's going to lighten up. Remember, watercolor always lightens up. Something you you know you'd want to write down in a notebook for watercolor notes. Watercolor always dries lighter after you put it onto the paper. About forty to fifty percent lighter. 
So if you put something down this dark, like you just see me doing here, it's gonna lighten a lot, almost half. Almost half of what you see here, that's gonna lighten up a lot. So always remember that. So don't be afraid to go darker and add some really dark washes to your paintings because you're gonna notice it's always gonna go, it's always gonna dry lighter. There we go. Blot up a little bit if you want to. You can sometimes lift up some paint. A couple of little dabs over here of blue, cobalt blue. And that is it. We have a completed painting right here, everybody. And it didn't take that much time. If you wanted to, you could even, you know, go back in and, you know, you could add in a little bit of gold colors and red just to make it a little more exciting. You can get some cadmium red. You can do some cadmium red, a little bit of spots here and there. Gold, you can do some gold over here. You can take some tissue and blot up some colorful colors if you want. But if you just have those little couple spots of colors here and there, that's going to add to the excitement of it. But that that's it. We're really, this is good. This is perfect. This is complete. Maybe if you want just a, maybe there we could add some orange and some red just to kind of we can do that and in a sense that'll really kind of spruce up things a little bit and then maybe a couple a couple little areas of and we could add a little bit of red Wow, look at that, how great that looks. A couple of really exciting colors splashed around your painting just like this. And that is really all you need. It's, and you can blot them up. The colors a little bit, you can blot up if you think, oh, it's maybe too exciting or, but you might want to leave it. And again, it's going to dry less intense and, you know, watercolor, again, it dries lighter and less intense as it dries off, actually. But I think this is good. We don't want to keep going over and over and over again. Let's leave it as it is. Let's peel off the tape. And I'm telling you, you you'll have a beautiful, exciting painting. And you paint it fast. You paint it with uh, passion and excitement and enthusiasm as you go. Knowing that in just a few 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, you have yourself a great painting of excitement. This gorgeous sand dune scene with a palm tree and some bushes and some mystery colors maybe some flowers in there but look at that how great is that and it's exciting and it's it, we, we did it in 20 minutes 15 20 minutes and this again you put this in a beautiful frame so a nice like nice white like off-white mat like a cream color mat around this and then a nice Maybe like a, a, me a metallic frame, like a silver or a gold frame, something like that. You can pick out something you like when you go to the uh, store, uh, your local uh, hobby and craft store. You can bring your bring your painting with you. That's the great thing about watercolors. You can carry this right with you as you go to the store and bring it and put it put it down and put it on top of different frames. Put mats over it. See what you think looks good for a frame and a mat for this. So you know, always try to frame and mat some of your paintings that you're doing. As you go, it's an encouragement that you're creating some really beautiful paintings, and um, they're uh, you know important. You want to put them in some frames and get them framed up and keep them at your your place. And uh, maybe someone might want them. They might want to purchase one. You might want to give one as a gift. Whatever you want to do with them, you might just want to hang it up and, and put it in the, in your place. Whatever it is, but remember, you are doing some beautiful paintings here, and you want to definitely. Put them in some frames okay all right so let's uh remember uh, please subscribe down here on the right hand side you just hit that subscribe button this way awesome you're you're set up you'll be getting my videos every uh week we're doing two three videos a week sometimes uh two uh and 
Again, we're covering all the fundamentals of watercolor, so each time you're coming to our videos, you're, you're getting all the fundamentals of watercolor, the basics, and if, you know, if, even if you're a pro and you've been painting a long time, you can still take a lot from these videos that I'm creating and, and incorporate that into your, your techniques and into your methods and how you create your artwork. Because maybe, uh, maybe in your artwork, you know, speeding up your process a little bit might free up to make you kind of create some interesting new ideas that you might, might not have done before. It's up to you though. You're the artist. You have fun with it. Take what you like from my channel. Use it. If you don't, no problem. You just leave it uh, and uh, just keep going. Okay, so we'll see you on the next video. Thanks again for coming by. Thanks for your great comments, all your encouragement, everybody, and especially those of you that have been with me a long time. Again, I always uh, really say that I appreciate that you've been with me for such a long time and following along on my channel. And um, we'll see you on the next video, okay? We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.